This is the IFF TV Podcast. Hi. Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm delighted to be joined by Gary Parsons from Tales from the East Stand Podcast. And we're here to speak about Shamrock Rovers. Firstly, I just want to say a big thanks to Gary for coming on. He is... I think it's the biggest podcast to do Shamrock Rovers. I think it's the best place where you can go. And it's probably your go-to for Shamrock Rovers fans. You've had Stephen Bradley on there. You've had players on there, um, ex-players. You have, I don't know how often you have podcasts, but they're very, very frequent. So do you want to just tell the people and the viewers where they can listen to you and you know what you're kind of all about as well? Yeah, yeah, check us out. All good podcast platforms, um, pretty much everywhere. Spotify, SoundCloud, the whole lot. Tales from the East Stand is what we're called. Uh, it's a weekly show when the season is on, monthly when it's off. Obviously, lockdown has hit us a little bit hard with uh, live shows and stuff like that. We had all sorts planned and it just it just go ahead, obviously, because of restrictions and things like that. But yeah, check us out. Instagram, Tales from the East Stand. Facebook, Riley Parsons, Riley Parsons, um, East, at East Stand Pod on Twitter. Yeah, so check us out and uh, the go-to place for all the Rovers info. Yeah, yeah, not only that though, you do, you know, normally when obviously fans are allowed to travel, you sort out buses and stuff like that as well. So it's not just a podcast, you just do other things as well for the club and stuff like that. Yeah, the Tifties bus is a bit, a bit like invitation only, so you have to earn your stripes before you get on that bus. But yeah, no, we do, we do, we do everything. We try and help out in every way possible. The prof is involved and he's the assistant editor of the program. He does stats for the club. Prof is a man of many talents. So it's, uh, yeah, no, we all do our best. I try and get the social social engineering is my thing. I try and get all the fans together and everyone make everybody happy. So, yeah, no, it is. Uh, check us out anyway if you want to listen. Now, check out our Brad's our cast. That's the one you should check out most recently. Um, Invincible team with a manager. And uh, check them out on the last podcast we did. Brad's our cast is what we're calling Stephen Bradley. And, uh, yeah, it's a good one. Happy days to go and check them out. We said we get you on, Gary. We're going to speak all about Shamrock Rovers. I enjoy, I'm actually going to enjoy sitting back and listening to you talking about Rovers. Now, we just want to talk about last season firstly, and I'm sure you'll be delighted to be speaking about that. Bit of a whirlwind kind of season because of obviously COVID. I mean, you've hit the ground running. We all remember the, the game. I think it was yesterday, a year ago, was that game against Dundalk, the 3-2 win. Jack Byrne famously on the left foot. Scoring the one um, against Dundalk past Gary Rogers, and he took a by Chris Shields. It's it's famous now, I would say. But um, did you kind of foresee at that point that you were going to go on and dominate, kind of as you did? Because I know that we'll come to COVID in a sec. But just at that point, I I think I think that could have been a turning point. But I also think that winning the cup the year before was a massive turning point, and it just gave us the belief that we could go on and win silverware and. And the team progressed. I think me the mentality of the team as well is huge. It's a ma massive. I mean, whatever Bradzer has been able to instill in them. And the way he just conducts himself. And he, like I said, listen to that last podcast. It's a fascinating individual. He sees things we'll never see as regards to football. And um, But we're talking about the cup final kicking on from that. It just gave us the confidence to go on and, and, and just be that team that we we believe we could be and speaking about the 3-2 again that was a massive turning point because Dundalk were a turn in our sides for years we just couldn't get the better of them they've been licking us for I don't know how long they've been pipping us to the title slowly creeping up towards our record of 18 leagues and um, I think uh, the 3-2 was huge in terms of just saying okay it's a stumbling block we can get over and uh, obviously Jack Bourne danced around Chris Shields and burying it in with his left that was a highlight so yeah, no, it was. It really was a, a, just something. It was a stumble block that we had to get over. And in my mind as well, particularly every time we played Dundalk, especially at home, we just couldn't get the better of them. And I, I think Brad's has said it as well. There was a one nil loss where Dundalk beat us, and Gannon scored. I think he put it through Manus's legs, and that was a big, big uh, advancing step as well because we we really couldn't beat them. But that kind of gave the team a little bit of. A bit of a boost to say, okay, well, we lost one nil, but we still, we still really, really should have beat them, and it was it's all a confidence thing. But um, yeah, like the season itself, I think like eighteen league, eighteen games, and a lot of people say, oh, you know, it's not a top a league, it's there's an asterisk beside it, but you only can beat what's in front of you, and not going to one game, like throughout the whole thing, it's just. Uh, well, obviously, after lockdown, we didn't go to games. But I think the last game, funny enough, when you said, could we foresee what was going to happen? We Our last away bus was to Sligo, the 3-2. 
and we 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 just happened to come across i think it was like 40 hazmat suits and masks and stuff like that and we just thought uh you know it's just a it's a minor thing we'll be over it in a couple of weeks and literally we know what was going to happen in the next year or so so um yeah so it was a uh, i think we, we i won't say we foresaw it was going to happen but it was it was surreal really yeah, just I talking about kind of you spoke about mentality and stuff like that. I think it showed a serious mentality because when the when COVID came back, obviously Dundalk st- struggled. I'd probably say the only two teams that didn't really struggle without a crowd were Shamrock Rovers and probably Bowes because they both really after the COVID they really took off and I thought they were kind of committed to their own. The thing I'm mostly impressed by with Shamrock Rovers is, and I've been to a lot of their games even still with COVID. I was able to get access or whatever. If I wasn't there, Gary Spain would have been at the games and just the way. And actually, the the uh, you know the the fact that you can watch the games and watch it away was a huge boost as well as so you could actually watch teams and how they how they do teams. But the way Stephen Bradley, his in game management, you spoke there about being fascinated and seeing things we don't see. I just think in games like if games say you might have been losing one one nil or whatever, he just changes things and he seems to do it at the right time or whatever. He, I just find some of the stuff tactically that he does is. Is brilliant as well as the football that he's uh, that he's played last season. I thought it was very entertaining as well. I think you've hit the nail on the head there. But what we always say is that me and the prof, we always take the piss and we say that we've we've watched them grow like our own little child, Brad's are <laughs> as regards to managerial decisions. And we used to be very critical of his subs, and that's what we've watched them grow and develop. And we've seen his progress as a manager and him and him being able to kind of advance to the next level of of a tactical genius to be honest because he's been fantastic over the whole course of the season and that's something that I think that he has grown big time in and it's it's really cool to see and watch him get better as a manager and tactically as well because like he was a bit naive at the start of his reign and we were just thinking to ourselves it's the same thing over and over and I think he has progressed it's been fantastic to watch and um just I think it, like you said in his in-game management, just the little things, just passages of play. And if you ever listen to the way he speaks as well, he just he just knows things that we'll never be able to kind of understand about football. And that's that's the one thing I really do I love about Brazza is that his tactical knowledge is just on par with anyone else who's in the game. Well, I think, you know, obviously he has his days at Arsenal and stuff like that. He obviously take he took stuff from that as well. And he obviously you know, you look at the players that he brought in, the likes of Jack, Aaron McAniff and stuff like that. And he, he, he did change their game, you know, for the better. You know, the two of them ended up getting international call-ups out of it. Obviously, Jack made his debut and stuff has gone on now to Apoel or whatever. But just the fact that he was able to get them in, you know, I know Jack came in kind of almost, you spoke there about, you know, like a child or whatever, but he kind of came in like a broken child. He yeah. nurtured them, got them back to playing probably the best football he's played since probably underage at City or whatever. But, look at what Jack went on to do like do you know what I mean in terms of everybody he brought so many eyes to the league that probably weren't watching before which is something that well I think we've spoken about before the league needs something like that someone like that a poster boy that people can go wow you know he is a really wonderful footballer that you just you would pay to go and see because he's just that good you know yeah, that's the thing, though. Don't underestimate the whole management team as as a collective. I mean, you've got Cronin, you've got McPhail, you've Brad, Darren Dillon, all these guys, and what they've done. Like, look at Pico Lopez is a perfect example. I always say, yeah. the transformation of Pico Lopez is stunning. From I'll be honest, like we didn't know where we had where we were going to play him when we first got him in. He was playing in the middle in front of the back four. He was a dodgy centre half. He couldn't pass water. But now look at him. He's the best footballer, footballer centre half in the league, in my opinion. You've got Aaron McNeff came in as a ten who play off the striker, just wanted to score goals. Now he's in action, all action, box-to-box midfielder, can do it all, tough tackling. Jack came in, couldn't run, wouldn't do six or seven kilometres in a game. The arm went around him again from our management team and he got turned and reinvigorated into a fantastic footballer. And I think that's what Bradzer doesn't get enough credit for and the management team is that they can totally, totally transform a footballer and see the potential that they have. He's done it with Pico, he's done it with Mac, he's done it with Jack Bourne. And he's continuing to do it. I think Watts is the next project for me. I think Watts is looking brilliant. And he's it's his time to shine this year, hopefully. He name-checked him in a recent uh, press conference as well, saying that he, he thinks it's now time for Dylan Watts to step in and fill those boots. Um, Lee Grace is another one who I think is, has been fantastic for you as well. Lee Grace, uh, still one of my favourite performances in a, in a Rovers jersey. The centre-half was absolutely stunning in the semi-final in Daily Mount Park it was his best performance and once again it's the it's the potentially season these players I mean we plucked him from Galway paid I mean we paid for him 
And uh, ultimately, it was the reason they got relegated, in my opinion. I mean, he was their, their centre half, their star player. We took him off and they, they ended up getting relegated. And that's pretty much why I think so. He was the gap at the back. But when he came in, he was pretty much unknown. And he's been moulded into one of the one of the better centre halves in the league. I mean, him, Pico and Joey are going to be very very hard to dislodge i mean we've got some we've got some talent there as well at the moment we've got sean Hall coming in you've liam scales i mean that's that's a plethora of of, of center halves just dying to get into that team so i mean i put it to a couple of fans and a couple of our listeners i said listen name you're starting 11 and it's you start getting a migraine myself because it's it's extremely hard to pick that starting 11 out of all that squad yeah, and I think as well, you know, I've been hearing glowing reports about Rory Gaffney in pre-season as well. And I think he didn't really get a, a chance really to shine just because of COVID and stuff like that. I think maybe with a pre-season under his belt, he'll come into his own now next season because, you know, you've got Aaron Green there, who I think, you know, may maybe not the best finisher in the world, but he'll work all day long for you. And I think, you know, I think Jack Byrne actually ultimately helped him as well. I think some of the passes he found him with some stuff is just unbelievable. Yeah. But he does work his socks off, I have to say, from watching him closely the last kind of couple of seasons. I know Greener has been absolutely amazing. And the thing is with Greener, Greener brings more than just work rate, brings more than just bringing other players into the games. The mentality that he brings with it. If you watch and just listen to him now, it's a lot easier because of watch LOI and you kind of hear and see a little bit more but just from reports from the lads in there on the ground he's a vital cog in that in, the, in that dressing room and that's that's massive but once again Gaffney was was hugely instrumental coming off the bench in the 3-2 against Dundalk he was absolutely amazing he was the one who changed the game for me and um, a couple of times as well he it's just he, he had that injury he had the Achilles injury finally it's it's out the window it's done and now he's fit he's got four and four in pre-season He's looking, he's a different element. I mean, he, he's the type of striker that's going to run in behind the centre halves and give them problems, whereas Greener would be more like to take the ball in and hold it up and look for other other players, whereas you've got Gaffney who's going to run in behind centre half. So it's definitely a different element to our team. And it's something that we did need because with young Dino, who's a great prospect, Dean Williams, and um, it's just something we needed that extra bit of bite up front. I mean, I think there was a in the cup final. You had Dean Williams coming on. No offense to Dino, but I just think that Gaffney would have been a better option. You know, so that type of extra little bit of bite on the bench, I think it's it's going to be essential this season. We just want to take a quick break just to speak about our sponsors, Manscaped. Ah, those are the screams that I would make when I would cut myself shaving before I knew about Manscaped. You need to try this out for yourself. The Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0 has been beautifully designed to reduce those painful nicks and tugs. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code IFFTV at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the right tools for the right job. Men, start taking notes because it's time to reduce cuts on your nuts. The Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0 has been beautifully designed to reduce those painful nicks and tugs. This is their third generation trimmer featuring advanced skin safe technology so you keep your bad boys nice and smooth. The Manscaped engineering team obsess over technology developments to provide you with the best tools for your grooming experience. And they spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created and just released a new and improved Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer. When I tell you this is premium, I mean premium. The battery will last up to 90 minutes so you can take a longer shave. The waterproof technology allows you to shave in the shower too. One of the coolest features is the LED light which illuminates grooming areas for a closer and more precise trimming. And let's not forget about the charging stand. Show your mower off loud and proud because this intelligently designed stand is a convenient charging dock powered by USB. So many people have written in stories about the Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer that has changed their lives. They even include pics so you could see the smoothest for yourself and they aren't kidding you need to try this out for yourself get 20 percent off free shipping with the code ifftv at manscaped.com your balls will thank you support manscaped because they support us yeah, i think i don't thank think you. you're you're being disrespectful to to williams there i just think he's a bit young as you say and yeah, a you bit know, in a couple of years maybe he'd be a better option do you know that type of way but you get what you're saying yeah, yeah, young C block. So he's uh, there's word he's going it alone. Now that's just r- rumors, Chinese r- whispers. You, you never know if it's going to be if it's going to develop or not. But we'll talk. We'll talk a little bit about um, preseason. So um, so far, our first game was Bray three all draw. We Brandon Kavanagh scoring against us. Word is that he cupped his ear, rang boy Bradley, and said, "Doubt me now." But 
Uh, no, no, that's, that's a mistake. Uh, Athlone 2 1 win. Uh, Cove 3 1 win. We beat Cork 2 1 and Cabin Tilly with a couple of Rovers 2 players involved in that. Um, unfortunately, we're, not, we're in limbo with Rovers 2 and the player situation there, so we're not too sure what's going to happen. But we John Ryan, young left back, Adam Wells, young left back, Dylan Duffy who scored, and we Dean McMenemy as well. So there's a couple of young players coming through. We lost 2 1 to Shells, believe it or not. I'd say you like that one. Um, we're just lulling them into a false sense of security. That's all. And then we well, just... I think I, th- I think there was you know not because I seen you know Graham Burke and a few others were playing against UCD, so I don't think anyone's really looking into results in preseason anyway. You know what I mean? I never do. I never do. It's like watching your dinner being cooked through the through the glass in the oven, isn't it? You, you just can't you can't do it. I, I I hate preseason. I don't really take much into it at all. So uh, it's just about getting uh, minutes and legs. And getting people see, there's a difference between like you could do 20k, you could do a 20k run, still not the same as match fitness, it's a total yeah. different type of fitness. So, I think that's ultimately what it's all about getting minutes into legs and getting the rustiness out of it. And, um, I think that's that's the best bet for me. And I can't, I'm delighted to see Gaffney scoring four and four now, Borky scoring as well, with Grace chipping in with a header or two. Uh, really looking forward to seeing Gaffney. And and Bork in particular, I think Bork is a sneaky one for our golden goal. He's twelve to one odds at the minute, so I think that's that's uh, that's a sneaky bet for anyone who's interested. I'm sure, we got five in one game last year anyway, so uh, yeah. wouldn't wouldn't rule it out. Uh, just just while I have you there, um, and we're speaking about that. So what I'll do, I'll do is I'll, we'll get your transfers that have left. We'll speak a little bit about them. We'll get your re-signed and we'll get your transfers in and then we'll get your prediction on where you think we'll finish. All right. So uh Andrew Dempsey, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep shouting him out on every video. He's basically done up all the transfers um right. on D football or D it's like yeah, D football scope dot blogspot dot com if you want to check it out. And um he has done up a list of all the teams premier and first division there and he done has the whole lot. The, the whole lot, yeah. Fair play, though. and I'm just trying to find Shamrock Rovers. There we go. Um, right, so out Greg Balger to Sligo, Ron, uh, Sligo Rovers, sorry, uh, Sean Callan to Bray Wanderers, Danny Lafferty to Derry City, Thomas Alua to Bowes, Jack Byrne to Applewell, Nicosia, Keen Clark to Bray Wanderers, Brandon Kavanagh on loan to Bray, and Aaron McInef to Hearts. There may be a couple missing there. You can let me know if that is the case, but that's what's on the list there. Um, big players have gone out if you're looking in midfield, definitely. Um, so so, what are you kind of thinking there with the regards to players going out? Well, the long drawn out saga that was Jack Bourne leaving the club, it was always going to happen. We knew that. We are very grateful for the two years we had him at the club. He was absolutely done, and he brought a. He was a skip in his step as he was leaving. You know, it wasn't, and it was a very heartfelt, emotional good boy as well. So we know no bad feelings towards Jack at all. We knew he was going to go. Um, a little bit surprised he went to Cyprus, but then again, when you think about it. I think he's been and done there in England. I don't think it was for him anymore. And if you look at the... I was checking out Apple Wells' transfers outgoing and they seem to sell a lot of players to bigger European clubs. So maybe he was looking at that. He was thinking, I could go there, have a good season. I could play in the Champions League and play well and you could get a move to a bigger European club. So listen, maybe that's what it is. We wish Jack all the best. Huge, huge loss. Don't underestimate how much of a loss it is. But I think we do have the firepower to, to kind of... To combat that, I mean, we've got Danny Mandroyo in, we've got um, Chris McCann, who, and what I'm hearing is absolute quarterback of a player, like a Rolls Royce in the middle of the park. He's supposed to be brilliant. So that's someone I'm really, really looking forward to. Uh, seasoned veteran at this stage, 32. I think he can, he had a lot of games at Bournemouth, over 200 games at Bournemouth. He was in with Montreal, I think, or Atlanta United, maybe he won a cup over there in uh, MLS but I think that's that's one I'm really really looking forward to and that's flying under the radar as well but we've got midfielders for days so that's possibly an issue as well to try and fit them all in you've Watts who's going to want to be coming into his own um, who else we lost Aaron McInef Aaron McInef that was a kick in the teeth to be honest that was a deadline day job I think they triggered his release cause and it was something that we, we weren't happy with let's be honest because we mold, we were starting to mould him seeing the best out of me an absolutely brilliant season that guy could he can run for days. Brilliant footballer, and he's been molded into an all action, out and out number eight. You could say you know he scores goals, he tackles, he's he's very very good at keeping possession, and very disgusted to see him go. That's being honest. That's because we were right. saying, ah, Jack Aaron's dead to us. He's dead to us. But now obviously we were taking the piss because we it, it came so quickly, 
and uh, we didn't expect it at all. So, yeah, but all the best to Aaron. He's been fantastic for the club. He's had so much time for the fans and anyone who ever asked him to do anything, he's been fantastic. So, yeah, no, big shout out to, to Aaron and hopefully he does well. He's starting to pull all the strings in the middle of the Hearts midfield now as well, taking the corners, taking the set pieces. So, he's making it, it's all, making it his own at the minute. Yeah, I actually had him at a guest on our podcast there the other week and he spoke so highly of the Rovers fans. You know, I think he was saying in one of his first games, he's already had a song and everything about him and Aaron Green was the one who brought it to his attention. That's the one thing we're most pissed off about more than that is that we won't be able to sing the song. I think it was Born on the Way to Bally Buffet and uh, yeah, it just it took off big time. And from, what, from what I'm hearing, the Hearts, Hearts fans have adopted it already, so... Oh, well, there you go. At least, at least it lives on in your yeah, in your memory it. in some in some, some ways, form, you know. Yeah. Um. Well, just before I move on to the transfers, Ian, I know you spoke about a couple of them there, but we want to talk about the re-signed players. Okay. So, um, there's a load of them as well. So, uh, you've got Alamanis, Joey O'Brien, Leon Pauls, Lee Grace, Pico Lopez, Liam Scales, Sean Kavanagh, Gary O'Neill, Ronan Finn, Darren Nugent, Max Murphy, Dylan Watts. Brandon Kavanagh, although he's gone on loan. Neil Ferrugia, Graham Burke, Aaron Green, Rory Gaffney and Dean Williams. You'd actually forget uh, how many of those big players are still at what the club. What yeah, a squad. serious squad. Yeah. squad in my living memory following Robert. And um, I can't I can't see any way past it. Like It's it's a superb team. And if you try and pick the 11, like Alan Manis is huge. That's him. We have him for yeah. another year or so. And that's, that's massive. That's a huge, huge part of our momentum going forward. Um, the, the centre halves, like I said, we five top class centre halves that walk into any team in the league. It's going to be very, very hard to pick three to just sit there if we do continue on with the formation that we're going. I think the fullbacks, Sean Cabinet and and Gannon, that's 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 Mount Water. Sean Cabinet is a gorgeous footballer. Sean Sean Gannon is absolutely the best right full in the league. I mean, what what more do you want? So we're absolutely delighted with that. But the midfield conundrum that is. Or the cloud, as it's known as. How are we going to fit all these players in? You've Watts, you've Mandrew, you've McCann, you've Borky, you've Gary O'Neill, who's been forgotten. It's it's a it's such a headache to try and fit them all in, and keep them happy. So, I mean, what way do you do it? It's, it's going to be extremely, extremely tough to keep them in. And then obviously you've got Gaffney, Greener, and Williams up top. Um, I really, I really, I don't fancy being Brads and in the hot seat there to try and pick that starting eleven for the Presidents Cup. Well, that's what he's paid to do anyway. So I, 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 I think you know he could be looking at maybe moving or changing the system around, maybe to suit the midfielders a little bit more. Maybe with a, a kind of three-five-two with more emphasis on the midfield, and then you've got Gaffney and Green up top or something like that. He may do that's that because we're hearing, we're hearing McCann is you could say the Tom Brady of the team. He's sitting in front of the back three and he's pinging balls, hmm. quarterbacking them, slingshotting them all over the park. Apparently his distribution is absolutely superb. So that's what you could be looking at and. You'd have their wing backs pushing on as well, but I think with two up front, I I'd love to see two up front. I always said it. I uh, I still miss the Twiggy and Baker days, so I'd love to see a partnership up front. Greener taking it in, Gaffney running off him. You know, a nice partnership. I can't remember the last successful one before or after Twiggy and and Baker. So yeah, it's, it'd be very very interesting to see what way we line up. I do see what you're saying though in regards to you know the midfield, like even that number ten spot because you're looking at Mandreo. Graham Burke. I, I don't even know where Graham Burke plays. If I tell Graham you Burke when I watch gets him. On the pitch. Graham Burke just gets on there and does what he wants. That's the way it is. He gets on free roll, Burke. You just go on and the rest of the lads are graft, popping shots from 40 yards and all. So that's that's pretty much Burke's role in the team. And he, he watch him every time. Every time he picks up the ball, he could be down in the middle of the park. He's looking for a shot. He's looking to try and lob the keeper or barely one in the top corner. Yeah, I just I always look at him. I'm always like, where do you actually play on the pitch? <laughs> I, I struggle, and and he always plays well. Like, don't get me wrong. It's just I I always trying to work out where he actually plays. Or see, when we were doing team of the season, we were trying to fit him in, but we were like, but we don't know where to put him. Do you put yeah. him, <laughs> you know, as a number ten? Do you put him out as a wide right striker cutting in on his left foot, or you know, he just didn't know where to play him. Well, he's so uh, he's so versatile. You can he can do it all. You know, he's he's brilliant like that. You could play him in the number nine if you need it as well. You can play up top. Um, I think when you when you're talking about trying to get more midfielders in, and they're like there's more popping in. You've Watts O'Neill. You, like it's just so so hard to kind of kind of pick it. And then once again with the possible coming of Tell Richie Tell, all the the rumors that are floating around, he could be coming in in the summer. That's an even bigger headache. I mean, what do you do? Do you put Richie in? I see someone telling him as a striker. No way. I think Richie's a number ten. You put him in behind a striker, but then 
what way do you balance that with the midfielders that you already have? So it's a, a selection headache, to to say the least. Mm, but as they say, squads win leagues. So I, I, I assume you, you remember from last year, obviously, um, they're the ones that win leagues and you need players when, when you know, you can't have a drop, a, a huge drop off in quality. When you have one good player coming out, you need someone who's going to be near enough to that quality, you know, coming against other teams. Otherwise, obviously, you'll, you'll end up losing games or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. And I think, our, like I said, it's the best squad in my living memory. And um, it's it's going to be very, very hard to to beat them. And I just think if, if we can continue on with the mentality and the form that we've had, you know, by our mind, the cup final, we did lose the cup. I think that was a, that was a freak uh, a freak occurrence, in my opinion. Um, I, can I just say now, I think Dundalk, I think Dundalk are going to struggle next season. That's that's I think I gave when Cork got relegated, I gave them the tip before that and I thought they were gonna do poor that season. The tip the tifty tip this season is Dundalk to finish outside the top two. I think G Vignoli is a novice coach. I think he signed far too many mercenaries and unknown entities and I think I think they're gonna struggle. So that's 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 one that's the one tip for me from, from for this season. All right. Well, fair enough. Uh, I'm sure the Dundalk fans will be firing at you in the yeah, comments hoping, over that. Hoping they bite. <laughs> um, so just last week we're just going to talk about the transfers you know, I know you've already spoken about a couple of them so just kind of maybe the ones that you haven't spoken about you've got um, uh, Sean Hoare from obviously Dundalk Sean Gannon from Dundalk Chris McCann Dan Mandreo and then of course everything's pointing to the fact that Richie Tell is pretty much it's a done deal it's just waiting to be announced probably in the summer probably my the most excited I've ever been about a player coming into Rovers because of their reputation, like Richie was absolutely brilliant for years and years with Dundalk, and he was a thorn in our side for years. Um, I can't remember a better player midfield was bar maybe Jack. Uh, he was he scored goals for fun. He could do it all. He was in amazing condition. And when I heard there was a, any sort of rumor going around that he was coming in, I was delighted. And I just never thought it would happen. Never thought it materialized. I thought there's no way this guy's going to come home. He's got a couple of years left in the legs to play League One, League Two, or whatever it is with Salford. And um it's pretty much a done deal from what we're hearing. And I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see Richie Town the hoops. If that's the case, I, I think he'll bring a lot to this team. Uh he, he's the he's the type of player that you'd need in Europe in the Champions League that could that could send you forward, you know. And that's what that squad is about as well. The rotation of the squad will be is gonna be needed. I was looking at our April fixtures, we've six games in April, so you're gonna need that squad, the big squad, and especially when Europe comes around, the games are going to be coming ticket fast. The likes of a Richie Tell in Europe is going to be essential. Yeah, I think I think you are definitely the most well equipped for the season ahead. I, I know Dundalk have brought in a lot of players, but they've also let key players go in terms of your thinking experience and and people in that in that dressing room. You know, Dane Massey was obviously a huge character for them. Um, then you had Sean Gannon and Sean Hoare both gone to you and as well as that Sean Hoare can play on the right side if needed for you guys as well but then you look at the strength and depth you mentioned Sean Cavanagh and you haven't even mentioned Neil Ferrugia who there could fill in on that left wing wing spot as well do you know what I mean so it's just there is an abundance of talent in that squad I, I actually think a lot of teams will do well to, to pick up points against Rovers you know and they've shown last season that with or without a crowd they're still very hard to beat and can still grind out results so you think of the Derry game up there um, really you know grinded yeah. out scrappy, result there big scrappy scrappy game that pretty much league winning form is what we what we call that you know it's a game like that where you're under the caution you're just not playing well it wasn't happening at all and I think Brad's have mentioned that as a turning point as well where they just weren't good enough at the time but they still grinded out a win, and he changed a couple of things after that. So that type of that type of squad mentality that you can bring together and win games like that, I think I think that still exists within the squad. Yeah, well, I think he's I think he's done it well with that regard because obviously he was you know drip feeding game time for Dylan Watts and stuff behind the likes of say Jack and mm. um, Aaron McAniff or whatever, and he was kind of drip feeding. So now he has that win. He's got the cup final. He's got the league under his belt. So now he has that winning mentality and other players among the squad as well, I'm sure do now have that as well. So I think he's been smart in that element, the way he's done that. Yeah, definitely. And then you have the likes of Joey O'Brien cracking the whip in there. Like, no, you can't have an ego when Joey O'Brien is in that squad. I mean, he'll bring you straight back down to earth with a, with a thump. And that's the that's the Literally. thing. That, yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic though. That's what's needed. You can't have an ego in this team. You come in, you work hard, and you get stuck in, and you wait for your chance. If you're not getting in the team, you can't sit there and whinge and moan. No, you keep working hard and training, and eventually it will come to you. But 
I think, like the like I said, with players like that, with Manus, we, we've got a great mix of youth and experience. And I think it's it's just really, really working for us at the minute. It's clicking. Look, bar, obviously, the cup final, which is a fluke. Um, with, uh, I, I really think we'll... we'll I'm not going to say steamroll the league because it's it's not my style, but I, th- I really am confident this year. I think we'll do really, really well over a longer season. Obviously, I think we're going to... I'm going to predict it and say we will win the league this year. Okay, well, that takes away my last question because I was going <laughs> to ask you, you know, where you think it was win. So you obviously think champions again and maybe yeah. a good r- run in Europe, maybe? It has to be. I think it's huge. If you look at the if you look at the way Europe is structured this year, it's huge to get, to win your first game. Massive massive huge like it's a, such a financial game and not even that just as as a footballing fan you want to see our team win and, and progress in Europe and hopefully we get I, I predicted at the, I think it was during the I think the fourth lockdown I said the fourth game we're going to get back is going to be away in Europe so hopefully away in Champions League is we get to go and we get to travel and we can watch the game but I think I think it's essential that, that you do well in Europe nowadays especially financially considering with the way things are at the moment I'm really confident and I was looking at the teams that we possibly could get and now I know it's only preliminary but we I think the new Saints are in there there's uh, Slovan Bratislava there's a couple of teams you'd fancy um, and I mean a boat trip over to Wales I, I think I'd take that over anything so um, there's some really really beatable teams in there and I know it's only early days but look I'm really confident this season especially with the recruitment as well because at the start the very now I know we lost Jack and Aaron who are not irreplaceable, but you know, really, really hard to replace. Yeah. And before they left, we were really happy with our incomings and our outgoings. I feel like everything we brought in was an upgrade on who went out. So I, at the moment, I, I'm extremely happy with the squad. I don't think we need to do any more business. And like I said, I think we'll go for a double. We'll go for a double cup under the league. Nice little yeah, run just, as well. Yeah, well, I, I just gonna, I was just going to ask you, you know, obviously watching the dark in the Europa League, that must give you some sort of, you know, inspiration to go, go and do it. Because I think, ultimately, the team you had last year might have actually done better in Europe than the dark. I think you can, you can only kind of hypothetically say yeah. that without actually knowing. But I just think you would have been better equipped. I think the, the way you play is, a, it's, it's, it's not your traditional way of playing. And obviously, Stephen Brady mixes it up. But I think it's a, it's a style that possibly could work well in Europe, you know. Yeah, I'd agree with you because I think I think it was the look of the draw. We got we were lucky and we were unlucky in the sense that we got AC Milan. It was a brilliant occasion. Yeah. We put it to them. I mean, we should have been one or two up with Aaron Green, um, a couple of chances. But any other draw, I think I would have been confident that we could have went through. You know, I think this team, like you said, is they're well equipped for Europe. Brad knows he, he does his homework. He's he's got a different brain than most people when it comes to football. He just seems to get it. Um, I think. Um, I think I, I, I'm really, really confident going far in Europe this year. And I love, because, I mean, it's it's widely available. I think, what's the name of it? Ice Scout, is it? I think the name of the, the thing you can get, you can watch all teams, matches on, but I think it's widely available. Why y- Scout, I think. Is that, that's what, that's what it is? Why y- Scout, I think. Want, yeah. But I think it's just different how you analyse it and how you prepare. And I think that's where we have a little bit of an edge and an advantage is that our, our backroom team are just, they, they go that extra mile when it comes to analysing teams. And, uh, yeah, it's just roll on Europe. That's what I'm saying. Hopefully, we can we can get away. Sneak fly. Yeah, well, hopefully, and obviously, it'd be great to have fans back as soon as possible because I've been to games. I'm, I think you've been to games as a volunteer as well, um, and it's just not the same. It's it's soulless in the stadiums, and it's not. And I, I actually really did enjoy. I think it was the the penalty shootout, seeing the pictures of the fans outside the ground and stuff like that. Um, which was nice to see because they're still trying to get involved and stuff like that. But hopefully we can get fans back soon. And listen, I can't thank you enough for coming on. It's been great to kind of get your thoughts on the season ahead, your thoughts on the transfers. I always enjoy having you on and, and chatting about the league and stuff like that. So hopefully we'll get you on again throughout the season and maybe for some more shows like this. Um, we can obviously have to adapt our game like like uh, teams themselves these days to try and keep the keep the train going, as you say. But um, yeah, um Anyone who's listening, that make sure to head over to Instagram, Tales from the East End, Twitter, East End Pod, and then on Facebook, it's Parsons Royley. Am I right in saying that? Roy, Roy, Roy Parsons, Roy Parsons. Sorry, sorry. I'll clip that out. Uh, mm-hmm. Royley Parsons. And then obviously, Gary, tell them where they can get the podcast. Oh, yeah. Well, Tales, uh, we're on Spotify everywhere. Google us. Google Tales from the East End will pop up. Keep an eye up for the merch. The merch is coming. Um, big shout out to all where Barry Sports they're great guys they've looked after us and uh, yeah we'll leave it at that and up the Larry's 
Thanks very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments, whether you're a Shamrock Rovers fan or maybe a Dundalk fan. Let us know your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much for watching. This is the IFF TV Podcast. Like, rate and subscribe.